A hidden gem that is in Xamarin Forms and .NET MAUI is the bindable layout for when you just need to show a couple of repeating objects. Let's go check out what it can do for you. So let's quickly have a look at the end result. Like I mentioned, this is in Xamarin Forms right now, already since version 3.5, but not a lot of people know about this because you might know the list view and the collection view and that controls have all kinds of power with scrolling and all kinds of cool things. Um, but what if you just need to repeat a couple of simple elements that are in a collection? Um, maybe some avatars that you're showing somewhere from users or maybe some simple strings that you see here that remind you of something that you still need to do on this channel. Um, so here you can see this is what we're going to implement with the bindable layout, just a couple of strings that are in a collection. And whenever you clear it, you will see that there is also a empty view that will allow you to show something um, whenever the collection is empty. So you, I don't know, you want to trigger the user to do something. Uh, but let's just go check out how to implement all of this in your own application. So it is probably no surprise that we are here in Visual Studio for Mac 2019 on the left and on the right, you can see that application running in the iOS simulator. Now on the left, you can see all the XAML that comes for, from the um, file new Xamarin Forms application. So this is just a template that you get out of the box. Uh, let's update the title right here because we are going to look at the bindable layout sample. There we go, save and with hot reload, it will up be updated automatically in my running app application um, on the simulator emulator and also works on the physical device. So that is really cool. Now, what is really cool about the bindable layout, it kind of extends all the layouts. So the grid, the flex layout, the absolute layout, um, the stack layout. Um, so you can use it on anything that inherits from a layout. Now for some layouts, it's not really that useful. Like for a grid, how is it going to lay out all the things? Um, for an absolute layout, I mean, you're going to position things absolute. So it's not really useful for those, but for like the flex layout, it can be very useful to have um, item sources in there, items in there that will automatically like, you know, wrap um, whenever the, the screen size um, runs out. Or for the snack layout, you know, it will just stack some things horizontally or vertically, um, which is very cool as well. Let's just dive in and see how we can implement this. So let me remove all this stuff here and actually um, implement a, a regular stack layout. We can see there's already a stack layout here um, at the, the outer one, but um, let's also add one here. And what we can do now here is say bindable layout, you can see it right here, dot, and you can see this is all the API. So it has an empty view, we'll see that in a little bit as well, an empty view template, um, which is basically the same empty view, but now you can specify it with a data template, um, the item source. So you might already know the item source from, and the templates, by the way, from the list view and the collection view and the carousel view, because they all use the same principles, um, and the item template and item template selector. Again, those are APIs that are used in the other collection kind of views where you can work with item templates and even select certain templates depending on some logic. So let's just add a item source right here. And I'm going to make this binding my um, strings. There we go. I have yet to implement that, but I will do that in a little bit. Um, and actually, let's just do that right now. So I'm going to go to my main page .xaml.cs right here. And um, let me just set up. So this works with data binding. I have a whole playlist on data binding and all the things that should pop up on your screen right now, or you can find it down in the video description below. Um, so let me just skip over that here and set the binding context to this. So basically this page is going to function as our view model as well and create a property. So public, let's make it a observable, observable, collection, there we go, so that you know, the, um, um, the values also actually update. So that's what an observable collection does, you know, over a regular collection of strings, because it will notify the UI that something has happened whenever you clear the um, observable collection or something like that, we will see why we need that in a little bit. And I call this my strings, there we go. And if you're using data binding, it's very important to make sure that this is a property. So there we go, my strings. And let's add some values to that. So my strings is new um, observable collection, there we go. And let's initialize this. Um, what, what, what should we put here? Maybe something like, hey, have you subscribed to my channel 
yet. Well, have you? Maybe you want to subscribe to my channel right now. Click on that subscribe button and watch out for more content coming in here. So now we have this set up and because I made some changes in code, we need to um, restart the application because if I'm going to save this, we will just see an empty layout because it didn't pick up on the code changes. So let me stop and restart the application really quickly here. And whenever it comes back up, we will see a really, really simple list because whenever we don't specify a item template, it will just call the two string on the objects that are in here. So in this case, it is strings. So that's great. If it's more complex objects, you might see like the object name in there because it calls the two string and the default two string just um, shows that the class name of the thing. Um, so here you see we just have this list and you can see it doesn't do the, the scrolling or anything fancy. It just shows the values under one another. So that is really cool. Now, Let's take it a step further and inside of this stack layout, let's say again, bindable layout. We have to do this because it's kind of an extension. It's not really properties that are on the stack layout or on the grid or on the uh, flex layout. So you have to access them by typing bindable layout dot and we can say item template. So um, we can also specify a template that has to be applied to each item inside of our my strings collection. So in this case on each string. So in this case, hey, have you and again, the template will be applied to subscribe to my channel and yet. Um, so we have to wrap this in a data template right there. And what we can do here now is build a completely complex layout if that's what we want um, to have it show nicely. So if you I don't know if you want to do uh, another stack layout and and do all kinds of colors and confetti and explosions you can do that right here um, so you can you can style this template any way you want I'm just gonna use a simple label right here just to get the point across to show you how to use this um, and what you want to do is the text you want to again use binding um, again I have this all in the playlist that I linked earlier so you want to do this to binding dot which means it's going to bind to um, the um, actual item that it's processing right now. So here the scope kind of changes because this binding suddenly um, is one of the items that is in this collection. That is how this works. Um, and we can say text color is, I don't know, let's take a red color, that's always nice. Um, so whenever I save this, we should see suddenly boom, now it are labels. It were already labels because it calls the two string, but now we um, did it in our own data template and we applied the red. So let's make sure that it's still horizontal, horizontal text option center. There we go. Save it again. And boom, suddenly they are centered again. So if you were a better designer than me and that's not very hard, then you can make something better out of this. So that is great. We can also have data templates. Now, um, template selectors will have you have multiple um, templates inside of your resources and then you can select them at runtime. I have a video on that as well should pop up on your screen right now or down in the video description below. I'm not going to go over that here in much detail because the other thing I want to show you is the empty view, which is also very interesting. So let me first add here a button at the very end uh, with a text clear. There we go. And let's make this a command so that we stick with our um, MVVM approach right here. Clear command. There we go and save that and we suddenly have a clear button right here down at the bottom it doesn't do nothing um, but let's implement the code for that so i'm going to go over to my main page.xaml.cs again add another property public command um, clear command right clear command there we go um, get set so now we have that one in place and let's assign something to that as well so we're going to say clear command is new command um, and what we're going to do with that command is just say my strings dot clear and because it's an observable collection the UI will automatically pick up on the changes and will clear out the collection on the screen as well now I made changes in code so I have to stop and restart the application real quickly and whenever we do whenever I click that button you will see that the um, collection is cleared and um, we will see nothing on the screen so clear, boom, everything is gone. The stack layout is empty. Um, but what we can also do is get the empty view in here. Now, let's see if this actually works because the collection is already empty. So let's see if the XAML hot reload is smart enough to pick that up. Um, and what we can do here is also again, bindable layout dot empty view, and you can also specify the empty template. Um, I'm not going to handle this. Um, check out the documentation is linked down in the video description below. Um, 
the template is a little bit more advanced than the, the regular empty view. But again, here in the empty view, you can build all kinds of layouts if that's what you want, or you can just say um, nothing to see here. So you can also just put a regular string in there and yes, it picks up. Um, and whenever you do that, it'll just show that string. It will put that in a label and show that um, to do that. So that's a very easy thing to implement. Uh, but you can also build complex layouts in here if that, that's what you want. So again, I'll just stick with a simple label, but you can add images in here. You can add um, all kinds of fancy things. So make it look like whatever you want, however you want it. Um, let's just make this text. Um, um, thank you. Oh, thank you for subscribing. That's, uh, that's uh, something that would happen, right? Thank you for subscribing again. So text color um, will be green, something like that. And whenever we specify it like this and I save it, then you can see that it um, it shows the label that we've specified instead of just um, showing that string um, really boring and with a black font and that kind of stuff. And that is the basics, how you can use the bindable layout. Now, again, I can't stress this enough. You can also use this with a flex layout or other layouts. Um, so go play with that. I hope that you now know how to work with simple repeatable objects with the bindable layout. Now, as I've mentioned before, this is available in Xamarin Forms. It's been available for a while, but not too many people seem to know about it. Um, and it will definitely also be available in .NET MAUI. So now you know how to um, repeat simple objects in a collection while using any layout that you like to use. So that is really great. This works really well with the flex layout where you can, you know, where it wraps around um, the viewport that it has to its disposal. Um, so that is really cool. Let me know if you built any fancy layouts with this did you already know about this stack layout please let me know in the comments also don't forget to like this video so other people can discover it as well subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already maybe consider joining this channel as a member click the little join button there as well to check out what that's all about and for the rest i'll be seeing you for my next video keep coding